Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Tackle Time Podcast. Appreciate you being here. Tonight we're talking about ice fishing, ice fishing in general. Um, we're a little late to this party, I think, as far as uh, actually getting the information out there before the season actually started, but better late than never. So if you were interested in ice fishing, you know, didn't know where to start, we're kind of curious with the what gear you might need, you know, what's what's a little different and how to, to really get, you know, get hit the ground running. I think this is a great episode, at least as an intro. Um, so we'll be doing probably some follow-up episodes on ice fishing and some more of the actual particulars and the specifics, you know, coming soon. Um, so we're going to jump into that. We kind of take a, a, like I said, a broad overview into what it is and what you need and, and all that good stuff. So uh, before we do, have you checked out tacklebuys.com? Have you searched for any gear you might need before you go and spend, you know, four, five, six hundred bucks on uh, on fishing gear? If you buy a new rod, new reel, I mean, that's depending on you know what you're buying is a hundred bucks, two hundred bucks, three hundred bucks, you know, maybe more. Uh, I know a lot of guys spend a lot of money on gear, and there's no point in ever paying. So the next time that you're looking for a good setup or uh, new lures, new baits, soft plastics, whatever, I mean, if you're looking for something fishing related check out tacklebuys.com first. We have thousands and thousands of sale listings for everything that's on sale from across the web. So you'll find some of the best deals right there. Make it easy on yourself. We're gonna get into this episode. Oh, guys, thank you for tuning in to another episode. We got Alec with me here tonight and we're gonna be, uh, we're talking about a little bit about ice fishing, which uh, as we were just talking about, we might be a little late to that game, but you know, it's still plenty cold out in, in a lot of parts of the country. So there's uh, there's still plenty of time to really get out there and, and try your hand at it if it's really something you're interested in. So sorry, Alec, say hello, brother, introduce yourself and uh, let's find a little bit more about you, man. Yeah. Hey guys, how's it going? Pretty cool to be on here. Alec, how did, um, being that we're on the subject of ice fishing, how did you get started wanting to freeze your ass off in the middle of winter time? <laughs> you know, pulling, uh, pulling fish through a tiny little hole in the ice and, uh, and think that that was going to be a fun, a fun task. Yeah. Well, um, I was born and raised in Wisconsin. So, um, ice fishing is pretty much all around us here. Um, you know, I grew up fishing with my dad, my grandpa and whatnot. And, you know, we'd always go out every winter and yeah, obviously being cold's part of it, but I don't know, it's just kind of a, you get a whole different experience, you know, trying to catch a fish through a little hole in the ice, like you said before. And I just think it's so much fun. Sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So did, um, the, you know, the guys you mentioned, did they ice fish before you or did you guys all kind of pick it up together? How that, how yeah, that well, um, from what I can, from what I know, my grandfather has been doing it forever and my dad's been doing it forever longer than I've been alive, obviously. But, you know, eventually once I got old enough, they started taking me along and, you know, I just kind of fell for it on my own. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So did, when you guys started, like, what was it, what was it like? I mean, did you have the, the setup and the, uh, the shelter and all that stuff? Or did you go out and, you know, just open air and, and a couple buckets and like total bare bones or, you know, what did that, yeah. what did that look like? Well, most of the time when I was a kid, we, uh, we'd bring out like a portable shanty out, you know, so it's on this big sled and everything. You find your spot, drill a couple holes, and you literally just flip it over like a little tent. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. Okay. So, I mean, space is pretty confined in one of those guys. I and mean, what did that look like having, uh, having three, three guys in there? I mean, that, that's, uh, that's pretty compact. Yeah. I mean, they, they make big ones obviously, but, uh, you know, fishing side by side by side is, I mean, yeah, it's a little interesting at times, but it's really not that bad. You get your own hole, and, you know, sometimes, you know, when you're, you have three lines in the water, um, it actually attracts more fish in or, you know, gotcha. one bait will attract fish in, but they'll only eat a certain other bait. So it, it also kind of helps you narrow down what, what the program is. Gotcha. No, that's cool. Okay. That's really interesting. Um, so are you, I mean, would you consider ice fishing to be something you really, really love? I mean, are you, are you, you use ice fish cause you like to fish and you know, you, you'd much rather be out there, you know, summertime and, you know, throw them from the bank or something. Right. Um, I'd say musky fishing's at the top of my totem pole, and then after that's ice fishing, and then below that it's kind of everything's kind of mixed together. I like to go after just about everything, but gotcha, gotcha. No, that's um that's super interesting. We had uh we had another guest on, and you you may have caught the episode at one point, but you know we were talking about musky, and you know as as the uh, the old adage, you know the fish of of ten thousand casts, and you know he you know he was right there with it. You know it's that's a that's a hard sport for sure. Um, I should say fish, you know, the, the sport is all the same, but the, uh, 
the target is, is totally different. So that's, that's great. Right. Um, you guys are like up on the upper end as far as where they, they really have it. They have habitat at, right? Um, they go relatively far into Canada, obviously not super far. There is kind of a, I guess you'd call it line where they cut off, but yeah, uh, yeah. Pretty much, I mean, the whole state of Wisconsin is just, I mean, it's our state fish actually. Oh, Wisconsin, wow. I didn't know that. So, yeah. Dang. That's cool. Okay. So I guess, um, I guess we ought to just dive right into ice fishing and really get it. Cause it's a pretty, you know, large topic i guess realistically i mean a lot of things it has a lot of similarities from what i understand to try and i've never done it so talk talk to me teach me about ice fishing like you know you were going to tell somebody who had no idea what it was about because that's me so you know for anybody else listening who's who has no idea what ice fishing is and and maybe wants to try it or maybe wants to go with a buddy you know what should they expect you know that kind of thing take us take us through that man all right. Yeah. So, I mean, ice fishing is just like any other part of fishing. You can make it as simple or as complex as you really want to. Um, you know, the bare minimum, obviously, you need something to drill a hole with into the ice. Um, they make hand augers. You know, it's just like a big drill and you twist it with your hand and mm -hmm. make a hole. And all you really need is a rod and a bucket and you can pull out fish if, you know, you're in the right spot at the right time. Um but uh, obviously it gets a lot more in depth than that when you get talking about sonars, you know, Vexlars or, you know, Hummingbird makes Vexlars or Markham, and all these different companies, mm -hmm. which it makes a real big difference. Um, not only does it tell you if you're on fish, but it'll help you figure out how deep you are all the time or gotcha. you know, different structure. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of guys will go out and they'll just, you know, bring one rod and they'll jig, you know, use a little tiny little tungsten jig, almost as small as you can get with a hook on it. Yeah, and I got you. Just a tiny little piece of uh, wax worm or a spike or pretty much anything you can find. And, you know, you can jig them up that way. Or a lot of guys are into uh, tip up fishing. I'm not sure if you know what that is or not. No, I, I'm not familiar with that. Literally, it's. <clears throat> It's just a wooden plank with a, a long spool on it. So you got a right. spool of line at the bottom and uh, it's got a flag on it. So you can set it in the water. Um, you know, usually around here, you use a shiner or a sucker, any kind of live bait like that. Okay. And you'll set it up and uh, the spool is connected to a little hook at the top that you rest the flag on. So when a fish will pull the line down, it'll turn that spool and the flag will go up. And, gotcha, uh, gotcha. You know, it's, a of, it's a lot of people will jig and then they'll set out in Wisconsin, we get three lines out here. So they'll set out two tip ups and, you know, they'll jig all day or vice gotcha, versa. Gotcha. Okay. So, I mean, for somebody who has never gone ice fishing, I mean, what, what's, what's different about it than, you know, fishing from a bank or fishing from a boat, you know, obviously you're, sitting still most of the day. Uh, I mean, what, what's that, what's that really look like? Right. Well, one of the things I really like about it is if you are, you know, you're fortunate enough to have one of those sonars that I was talking about is that you really get a good idea of how the fish behave and how they react to what you're doing. Okay. Cause you can see, you know, you can see the fish live on the screen there. So, you know, sometimes if you move it fast, it'll get them fired up. Sometimes you move it slow and they, they don't want anything to do with it. You know, I, I just find that super interesting. It'll change from day to day as well. Um, I really like that. And, you know, obviously you're not always stuck in one hole necessarily. Mm -hmm. you know, like I personally like to go out there and I make Swiss cheese out of the lake most days, you know, just trying to, you know, drill right on top of the fish. But uh, no, I just... I think it's really detail oriented. All right. In the winter time, you're going after these finicky bluegills and the tiniest little color change, or you know, they're going to eat a, a red worm versus a white worm, or you know. Sure. So, so typical fishing in that respect. Right. Right. So when and, you uh, go and, and get ready to go out, you know, go on go on the lake or or you know wherever it is that you're you're going to go fishing, like what's what's your day look like? You know, what are you what are you getting ready? What are you bringing with you? all that uh well it'll, it'll depend i bring different gear out with me depending on how much ice there is or what gear there is or anything um first ice you always want to bring your spud bar which is literally this big metal rod that you bring with you and 
if you're not super sure about the safety of the ice, you kind of, you know, jab away at the ice in front of you as you walk and make sure it's still thick enough gotcha. for you to walk. Around. Okay. Um, yeah, you make sure you have that, your ice picks. So if you fall in, you just worm around your neck and kind of claw yourself out of there. Gotcha. Okay. I have a float suit too as well, um, which is, you know, really nice. Um, fortunately, I haven't had the chance to use it, but, uh, you know, I've seen them, I've seen them in action and they're pretty incredible. Yeah. Let's, um, uh, let's hope you never have to. Right. Right. Um, but yeah, other than that, you know, you wake up in the morning and you always got to go get bait. Usually I'll get uh, a little, little tin of uh, wax worms or spikes for jigging and then uh, uh, a couple of shiners or chubs or whatever, depending on what I'm fishing for, obviously. But um, you know, grab everything, put it in the sled. If it's cold out, I'll bring a, I usually use a pop-up shanty now. Okay. So you have to bring a separate sled, but it's, it's pretty much this big pop-up tent that's super insulated and everything. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, throw the heater in there. Um, yeah, head out to the lake and obviously looking at maps is a really big part of ice fishing. Um, you know, obviously you're not that you're stuck in one place at a time, but it, sometimes you want to be on the spot on the spot sure i mean we so, talk about like like maps from the like the fishing game kind of thing or we look you know we're talking about like depth maps and what do you yeah want? like contour maps um yeah. i use a lot of navionics or the, okay. uh, the chip on my hummingbird the lake master chip gotcha you know obviously it depends what you're going after and what you're fishing on exactly but sometimes you know it pays to drill a couple extra holes and make sure you're on that that spot and then after that, you know, depending on what we're doing, we'll set out tip ups. Um, a lot of times, you know, just set them out two feet off the bottom and wait, go back in the hut and jig and, you know, kind of keep us occupied while we're waiting for one of those flags to go up. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So, and that's, so relative, relatively straightforward then. I mean, once you have your gear, you're, you're kind of out there for, you know, however many, however long you want to be, whether it be for a few hours or, or a whole day until you call it quits. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's an awesome thing about ice fishing is, um, I mean, it definitely pays to have transportation, you know, later in the season, if you have a four wheeler or side by side or snowmobile, it's, you know, you can pull everything in your sled because walking through a couple feet of snow on the ice, pulling on your gear gets pretty tiring pretty fast. Yeah, sure. Definitely. But yeah. I mean, you can, and that's a nice thing. You can bring as many people out as you want. Um, you know, a lot of times we'll bring a grill out and have a cookout on the ice and oh, even cool. okay. on the ice, just relax. And, gotcha. Gotcha. You know, if you don't want to take it too seriously, you can just invite a bunch of buddies out and set out a bunch of tip ups and just kind of, you know, stand there and watch the flags and, you know, just kind of relax, which is, that's another thing I like about ice fishing. It's just a different experience in open water. Sure. No. And I know, I know a lot of guys really look forward to it as far as a, a, a way to slow down, you know, in the fishing world, it seems like everything is yeah. so fast paced, you know, normally as far as how guys are fishing and, and, you know, demanding and all that out there. So, you know, ice fishing is a different, totally different animal in that respect. The, obviously you're talking about dr drilling different holes. I mean, so are you, are you moving the shelter, you know, several times or even moving at all or are you just kind of fishing in different spots seeing what's working and then setting up where it seems to be a good spot yeah that's kind of a case-by-case -case situation obviously how cold it is plays a really big factor in that mm -hmm. i'm a lot more likely to just you know hunker down and find a spot if it's you know negative 20 outside but sure you know on days where you know it's 15 degrees or warmer i won't even bring the shiny a lot of times you gotcha. know just okay. be as mobile as possible i'm a true believer in you can catch a lot more fish that way. Huh. Okay. You know, the more you are, the more fish you can catch out on the ice. Gotcha. Okay. So obviously, you know, we, we were talking about the shelters and all they're, they only get so big. I mean, even, even the big ones are, are they're pretty good size, but you know, they're only so big. And the one thing I didn't realize until, until real recently was, you know, tons of companies make specific gear for, ice fishing, you know, whether it be a rod and reel combo or whatever. I mean, so, so tell anybody listening, you know, what they might need to know about that as far as getting outfit and getting ready out there. Right. So honestly, the most common thing that people will be using a rod and reel for is, you know, panfish, bluegill, crappie, perch, um, especially around here. And uh, even there's a lot of, a lot of lakes where 
a lot of these fish are just stuck in the, the shallow bays. And a lot of these guys will just have a relatively long rod with a piece of line on it and they'll just dip it down in the water, don't even use a reel. Okay, okay. It's kind of interesting, but uh, no, I mean, length of rods go anywhere from, you know, 20 inches all the way up to 40 inches in some case, depending on what you're fishing for. But, uh, okay. you know, if you're fishing for those panfish, you want a super light sensitive rod. Definitely. A lot of times these fish will bite so gentle that uh, you won't feel it. You'll just have to watch the little rod tip. Okay, gotcha. No, that makes sense. So, I mean, what um, other gears? What other gears different? You know, besides just rod and reels. You know, as far as the fish in the ice fishing world. Um. Well, I mean, obviously, um, ice augers. That's a really big uh, topic with these guys. Is uh, you know what kind of augers? There's gas, electric, propane, or hand augers, and make augers now that you attach to a cordless drill. Mm -hmm. So there's, I mean, that's a really big debate. Um, and obviously the fish finders. Mm -hmm. um, Humminbird, actually, I have a, I use a Helix 7, okay. which I also use on my boat, which is awesome. and has an ice mode on it, so I can just oh, nice. you know, transfer open water to ice fishing. But uh, a real big brand and just ice sonars, Vexlar, Vexlar and Markham were the other two big brands. Mm -hmm. And they make, you know, you can, you can get into them brand new for around 200 bucks. And obviously I think they go up from there, but. Sure, sure. So what makes, unit. what makes one of those units different than, you know, your, your typical, you know, uh, fish finder that you put on your boat or your kayak or something like that? Yeah. So uh, like a Vexlar, um, all it is, it's it's a circle, and it'll show up um, with little lights. So, you know, you can you can adjust obviously how deep it'll go, so you can see where your bottom is. But uh, it's just a circle, and you know, any mark that it'll get, any feedback from the sonar, it'll just show up as a flat line on it, so you can see where your bait is, and you can see where your uh, any fish are. Okay. And real time, which is you know a big difference then. Obviously, I don't know if you've heard of the like the pan optics guys use for open water. No. Uh -uh. Um, well, it's a real big thing in ice fishing, but uh, it's uh, literally this big sonar cone that's super wide, and it'll you know show you what's going on in real time. Gotcha. And, okay. uh, the big thing about the pan optics is, uh, you know, it's not super different than any other sonar, other than the fact that it covers way more area. Yeah. Sure. Uh, that's right, Armin. Yeah, that's it's kind of changed the game the last couple of years. But okay, I'm, I think Hummingbird's coming out their own version of it sometime soon here, so I can't wait to see what they bring out. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So, what else does somebody need to know? Whether there be you know difference in baits, in technique, you know, if they want to start ice fishing themselves. Um, don't be afraid to go smaller. Um, you know, that's with lines and baits. Okay. Uh, like Times we're using lines as small as two pound test um, for those little pan fish. Um, you know, don't be afraid to try different colors, different plastics versus live bait. Um, and then watch your watch your sonar definitely, because like I said before, sometimes they'll want it totally dead stick, and sometimes they won't eat it unless you're just you know ripping it super hard. Sure. Gotcha. Then, okay. So you're typically going out, I mean, you mentioned both, both jigging and, um, I forget what the other technique you said, you know, uh, the board. Tip -ups. what was it? Sorry. Tip ups. Tip ups. Yeah. So you're, right. you're jigging and tip ups for the most part. I mean, it is, do you, do you see more, you know, more results on one versus the other, or you just, you kind of do both to see what's working that day? Well, I mean, honestly, the majority of what I do is I'll go out to a lake and I'll jig for panfish and then I'll set out tip ups for either uh, large mouth or northern. Okay. So, you know, with, I'll, you, on a good day, I'll catch more panfish and then, you know, every once, every couple hours, we'll get a tip up that goes off. Gotcha. Um, but, uh, I mean, it depends on the day and where you are. Obviously, I've had days where I've had nothing but flags go off all day or. Sure, sure. So. Okay. So, so you're. Really you're doing it both just to increase chances and you see what you can get and, and have better. Right. Okay. All right. Right. Um, is there a difference in gear and, and, and 
you know, setup that you're using on a tip up versus your, your jigging setup. I mean, I'm trying to make sure that I understand it because I'm, I'm not sure that I totally can wrap my head around what the difference is between them. Yeah. So on a tip up, a lot of times, um, all you'll have is a, you know, you on your line, you'll just run a split shot and then whatever kind of leader you're using, um, depending on what you're fishing for, obviously. But then it's a lot of times it's just a treble hook and you'll put a shiner on it and like just set the, let the shiner uh, swim around down there. Okay. So it's, it's, you know, sitting still the whole time, except for the gotcha. movement of the shiner, but. Okay. So totally hands off and you're just waiting for something to come along and grab it. Right. Right. Okay. You know, it's just an extra two lines in the water that are kind of doing the work for you. And by the way you describe it and, you know, versus the, the jigging style is that you're, you're prepping the tip ups for mostly for, for a larger fish, like you said, a small mouth or even a large mouth, whatever might come along. Right, right. Yeah. And the majority of what we catch up here is, you know, a lot of times it's a northern and every once in a while you get a bass. Okay. Gotcha. Anything other than that's pretty uncommon for, for the kind of fishing I do anyways. Got it. Okay. Okay. So are you, I know a lot of guys who are ice fishing actually go to, you know, stock up the freezer or do whatever, bring a little bit of home. And were you eating any of the ones that, that you're catching or just tossing them all back? Very rarely I do. Um, obviously I, I love a good fish fry every once in a while. But... Sure. Yeah it's always seemed like there's this stigma around ice fishing that everything you catch, you got to keep. And I don't know what it is about ice fishing. It's just, you know, you'll walk through uh, one of those bays that are just full of these pan fish and every dude's got a pile of 20, 20 bluegill sitting next to them. Sure. Yeah. I feel you. I mean, it is what it is, but uh, yeah, I'll keep them every once in a while, but the majority of the time I'll throw most of them back. Got it. Okay. Um, so, I mean, what else, I mean, what, what haven't we talked about that, that might hang somebody up if they were either just going to get started or go with somebody else and they weren't really ready? I mean, I, I guess obviously, you know, something that comes to mind that we really haven't talked about, but, you know, it's pretty, pretty simple, but it's easy to gloss over is, you know, dress them warm, you know, dress them appropriately given them. I mean, so what else, something like in that same vein, you know, what else can people get hung up and get into trouble with? Yeah, definitely. Um, another thing a lot of people may not realize is, you know, in those early ice situations or in a year like this year where we haven't had much snow is uh, a lot of guys will wear cleats on their boots. Mm -hmm. You know, so you're not walking on the glare ice and, you know, it, it may sound like super simple, but if you forget them, we can make for a really long day out on the ice, you know, gotcha. just slipping on everywhere. Yeah, um, sure. That makes sense. And then obviously make sure everything's charged. I've gone out there numerous days where I forgot to plug in the the auger or forgot yeah. to plug in the, uh, the fish finder. And... Well, it's even worse because, because cold just drains a battery on everything you got anyway. So if, right. if not, if it's not all the way up, it's going to make for a miserable day. Right. Sure. And you know, if you're running an electric auger, it, it helps to, uh, either keep like it in a separate warm bag or a lot of times I'll just put my extra batteries in my coat pocket sure. so during the day. It depends how cold it is, but if it's under, you know, 10 degrees, then it's definitely a nice uh, precaution to take. Just so yeah, you know. that makes sense. Okay. Um, so, I mean, like, what are you wearing when you go, I mean, were we talking about, you know, just something as simple as, you know, like snow pants and a car hard? I mean, what else, like, obviously there's, I know there's, you know, ice fishing jackets and gear and all that stuff. Right. I mean, is that, is that necessary or can you get by with just some good, just some good warm gear that you might already have? Oh yeah, no, it's definitely not necessary. Like I said, the only Honestly, the biggest reason I actually have the, you know, name brand ice fish and stuff is just for the float suit. Oh, sure. Okay. But, you know, I mean, growing up, I'd always go out in my, you know, regular snow pants and a jacket and my boots. And, you know, I've, obviously when I was a lot younger, I wouldn't push the boundaries quite as much as I do now on the early ice. So it wouldn't be as much to worry about with the whole float suit, but uh, sure. yeah, definitely. I mean, a nice pair of boots you know, make sure you got your wool socks on and everything and try to stay dry. And it's a big thing. Yeah. You get wool out there and kind of ruins the whole day. Anything else that you can think of in that same vein that we should tell, you know, as a precautionary type thing for, for people just wanting to start out? No, I mean, just make sure you're prepared. Don't underestimate the weather. You know, I mean, especially if you're you know, doing more than walking out there. If you're out on the Great Lakes, I've read stories where uh, these guys will go out on these lakes and uh, and a big chunk will break off and it'll just float away into the open water. 
Oh, you know, they started a couple of years ago. We're a couple of miles out on Lake Michigan, and they didn't oh, even wow. realize it was going to come in. That would be yeah. Insane. Just you know, that would tell be people insane. where you're going and when you plan on coming back. And Whew, I'm glad I'm not those guys. That would be a really uh, that would be a really scary realization that you're floating off yeah, no the lake. Damn. No, okay, got no. That's cool. Um, I, I figure we probably should just quickly talk about before we kind of wrap it up. I mean, how do you, you know, if you're testing the ice, you're this is all new to you. You have no idea, good ice, bad ice. You know, if you don't have somebody to go out there and teach you, I mean, how do you, how do you start? How do you know what what's what's good and bad, and how do you not, you know, fall in? Right. So, um, big thing is is make sure you have a spud bar and that's the biggest thing for early ice you know not it doesn't have to be a spud bar even i've seen people use barbells you know just anything heavy and uh start on the shore and just you know whack the ice a couple times um kind of get a feel for how many hits it takes for you to break through okay. and then kind of measure how much that is so a lot of guys will say that two inches is kind of like the minimum to walk on got it okay two inches of like good clear ice the dark clear ice is your good ice and uh you know definitely stay away from that white cloudy ice if you can okay um, it seems to be a lot softer but yeah just take it one step at a time um you know this year for example i went out pretty early i was the first guy out on a couple of the lakes up in northern wisconsin and uh every single step i was taking i would you know use a spud bar and for me if i give one good whack and no water comes up i know there's a good three inches oh, okay yeah just take it one step at a time and it's a lot a lot better if there's no snow sure that makes sense you know a lot of times you can kind of see where the ice gets bad it'll change color or it'll you know just be different yeah um, uh, just, just keep an eye out for that if there's snow on it definitely every single step use that spud bar if you're not 100 percent gotcha. positive gotcha. Okay. No, no, that's, that's good info. I mean, it, the, the visual cues, I'm sure, like you said, being able to actually see the color of the ice, you know, any kind of imperfections or whatever. I mean, are there, are there bad little spots that you might get, a, you know, one, you know, one small area that's, you know, thinner than the rest. Have you, have you experienced that? Oh yeah. Um, pretty much every single lake, um, you know, some lakes have springs. Okay. So the springs are coming up. They're different yeah. water yeah. temperature. Yeah. It'll water, change yeah. the uh, a lot of lakes freeze at different time. different parts of the lake freezes at different times. Mm -hmm. So half the lake will be frozen for about a week, you know, and the wind will keep the other half open. And then the first cool night, that second half will glaze over and it'll all look like it's frozen. Um, so that's why it definitely pays. If you're looking at lakes, you know, around you to get out on first ice, just keep an eye on them, the, you know, a couple of weeks prior, just to make sure you know where those, you know, different spots are when they sure, close over. Sure. No, that's, 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 that's good info for sure. Well, cool, man. This was, this was really good. I, I, um, I definitely like just learn a little bit more because it's ice fishing is something I think, I don't know that I would go and do it myself, but I'd probably like to go with somebody who's is a little more experienced, right. just have fun. And I, I, you know, I'd be up for that, but, um, tell anybody who, you know, who's listening in and wants to, you know, connect with you and may, you know, may, they might have questions. They just want to follow you. I mean, where, where can they find you and, and where can they learn a little bit more about you at? Um, well, right now I, I started an Instagram page a couple months ago, um, at Kraken Hogs, K-R-A-K-I-N underscore H-A-W-G-S. Um, you know, I just, I've been doing this my whole life, but, uh, I figured I might as well just start sharing it with people. So I started that up and I got plans in the near, near future to start making videos too. So. Oh, okay. Awesome. We'll make sure to, uh link that in the in the description so people can find you and you know and connect with you so hopefully uh get you some more people to connect and uh and follow you along for sure yeah awesome appreciate it i um i have one question for you and i'm just curious you know over the last year i mean everybody as, as anglers i think we're all kind of gearheads realistically you know we all like you know new gear the best gear you know new stuff right. what's you know within the last year what would you say has been your your favorite purchase you know that's fishing gear related um it honestly it probably has to be that helix 7 i got okay um just you know the main fact that i use it all winter long ice fishing and as soon as spring comes around i i've thrown it on my kayak before sure um 
and then I use it on the bow of my boat as well. I just, I use it everywhere and uh, being able to connect the Lake, Lake Master chip to it, you know, get those maps in there, you know, because I just spent a week up at uh, Rainy Lake in Minnesota ice fishing. Okay. And uh, it's a huge lake, 227,000 acres or something like that. Wow. Just absolutely massive. And uh, that map was, you know, a big thing for me. Um, you know, cause otherwise I would have had to pull out my phone on the snowmobile and like, it's pretty cold really fast. Yeah, so. definitely. definitely. Having a hummingbird on my lap there and being able to follow where I'm going on the map on that big lake just made a huge difference. Awesome. Awesome. No, cool. That's, that's definitely something I, I mean, a good fish finder and, and good gear is, is always great to have. So, well, cool, man. Well, thanks again for coming on. We're going to go ahead and, uh, and, and cut this one off here. So, um, guys, we will catch you on the next episode. So thanks again, Alec, for coming on. Yeah, no problem. Thank you.